Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Alex and I'm gonna show you in this video three ways in which we can display data from Firebase real-time database using the new edit method called get. This is a video for an article that I wrote. Link is in the description below which was recently published on the Firebase Tips and Tricks publication on Medium. Let's take a look at the project. First, let's open the dependencies with which I'm working. Here are the lifecycle extension and the live data artifacts along with Kotlin coroutine and Firebase real-time database version 19.6.0. When it comes to reading data from Firebase real-time database, there are two options available. First one is to read the data using a persistent listener, meaning that will always be in sync with the Firebase servers. Or we can read the data only once. The first option is very helpful when we need to listen for changes in real time. We can achieve this using queries add value event listener method. This method adds a listener for changes in the data at a particular path in the database. Each time the data changes, the listener will be invoked with an immutable snapshot of the data. However, there are cases in which we need to read the data from the database only once. Even from the beginning in 2015, it was added in the Firebase real-time database Android SDK a method called addListener for single value event. This method adds a listener for a single change, meaning that we can read the data at a particular path exactly once. This method remains part of the Firebase real-time database Android SDK ever since. On the other hand, Cloud Firestore, the newer, massively scalable, NoSQL cloud-hosted real-time database from Google, has another type of mechanism for reading the data once. To read a single document, we can use document reference get method which is this. While reading multiple documents from a collection, you can use Firestore query get method that returns a task object of type query snapshot. Both methods read the data only once. Luckily, starting from this version 19.6.0 of Firebase Real-Time Database, we have the option to use a get call too. Because of the inheritance relationship that exists between these two classes, it doesn't really matter if we are calling get on a database reference object or on a query object, we'll always read the data precisely once. This method returns a task object of type data snapshot. As we already know, the Firebase APIs are asynchronous, so I'll try to explain in this article three ways in which we can get data from Firebase real-time database using the new more than added get method. The first solution, which is some kind of an old Java habit, is using a callback. That's so-called the Hollywood principle, which stands for don't call us, we call you. The second solution is using an Android architecture component called live data, and the third one and the most elegant one, in my opinion, is using Kotlin score. So, let's get started. The database on which we are working has the following structure which is this one. And as you can see, in the database schema, we have a node of products, meaning that each child within that node is a product object. Here is also the corresponding class. Because the result of a Firebase real-time database score will always return either the products or an exception, we'll use a response class that looks like this. Since the response contains one or the other object, never both, to keep things simple, I created in the products activity class a print method that locks either the name of the products or the error message. I'm talking about this method. Now, let's talk about the callback solution. When it comes to the first solution, the first things we need to create is an interface which is called Firebase Callback. This contains only one abstract method that takes a single argument of type response. With respect to the MVVM architecture path, in the products repository class, we define the products database reference object inside the constructor. Let me open the repository class and see this reference, and then create a method for the database call that takes a single argument of type Firebase Callback. This is the method responsible. Depending on the connection speed and state, it may take from a few hundred milliseconds to a few seconds before the data is available. When the async operation completes, the result object becomes available. As seen above in the response class, the first object is a list of products. 
but the result that we get contains a list of data snapshot objects. To be able to assign such an object in the response class, we need to map each object of type data snapshot into an object of type product using this operation. This can be done using data snapshot get value method. This method is used to convert each object contained in this snapshot into an object of type product. If, for example, the Firebase servers reject our database call, a database error will be true. The exception object will be set to the second object in the response class. In the end, we simply call the onResponse method on the callback object by passing the response object as an argument. In this way, we can propagate the data directly to the view. To make this mechanism work from our products view model class, we can call the above get response for Firebase real time database using callback method like this. To be able to call this from the products activity, we need to define a view model object. So let me guys open again the products activity and show you our view model object, which is instantiated in our on create method right after the instantiation we can call the following get response using a callback method the mechanism is pretty simple once the product or the exception becomes available the on response method from the interface files since is an abstract method the implementation within the anonymous class is triggered hence the following result in the logcat the second solution is the live data solution. As already said, it's using a live data object. Back to our products repository class, we create a new method called getResponse from real time database using live data, which has almost the same mechanism as above. But instead of passing the response object to a callback, we set it into a mutable live data of type response and return it as a result of a method. This method can also be called from within the products view model class. And from the products activity class, we can observe this live data object using this method. To print out the results, the get response using live data method should also be called from within the onCreate method. The result in the locket is the same. Now let's talk about the last solution, the solution in which we are using Kotlin Scored, which is by far the simplest, elegant, modern and consist solution. To get the data, this time we define a suspend function inside our product repository class. Let me open again our repository class and let's see the last function. Inside the trial block, we can call get on the database reference object and then simply call away. We map again each object in the same way we did before. The get response from real time database using quality method is also called from within the products view model class, where we emit the result further to the activity. So it can be observed using this method, calling the get response using coroutines from within the onCreate method, will produce the exact same result as in the previous two solutions. As a conclusion, these are the three solutions that can help us get the data from Firebase real time database using the recently added get method. Firebase team, you did again a really great job. So in the end guys, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. But if you think you learned something new, please subscribe to my channel as more videos are coming. Bye.